Question 7 says a window washer is standing on a scaffold supported by a vertical rope at each end. The scaffold weighs 204 newtons and is 2.9 meters long. What is the tension in each rope when a 710 newton worker stands 1.9 meters from one end? So what we have here is our, it, it mentions our scaffold and then it says there are ropes supporting it vertically straight up and down at each end and then it says that this thing is is 2.9 meters long and then we have we have a man standing 1.9 and I'm, I'm saying all his weights on that foot 1.9 meters from this edge and so if the whole thing's 2.9 that means there's one meter left so that's one meter 1 plus 1.9 equals 2.9 and um, it says that our scaffolding weighs, so this weighs uh, 204 newtons, and our man weighs 710 newtons. So we have our two forces are in newtons, so 710 plus 204 is 914 newtons. This is the, this is the sum of our forces, and so we can say that, that the force pushing down on, uh, for instance, on this end right here would be, e so if we took the, uh, this would be, of course, we're saying it, since he's standing right here, um, there's going to be less force on this one. So the, the, the smaller force, we'll call this the smaller force over the sum of the forces, is going to equal the larger torque, I'm sorry, the smaller torque over the sum of the torques. Now I think one mistake that can be made is that we would say that oh, this number right here is the smaller force and that's not the case. Um, this is just part of the total force. We, we can think of it as just being part of the total force. The smaller force is going to equal, so we're going to use this to figure out what the torques are, but we're not going to use this to figure out uh, what the smaller force is. Okay, so with that in mind, 204 um, newtons is e is evenly distributed about the, its center mass, and so its center mass is exactly 2.9 divided by 2 is is 1.45 meters. Uh, so 1.45 meters times times 204 plus. So this will this will work whenever we're calculating the torque on this side and the torque on this side. So um, we can add, we can keep that and we can add that to the torque of this guy. So if we say that he is standing at the one meter mark, then we don't have to. All we have to do is one meter times 710. All we have to do is add 710 to find the torque on this side. So this is actually getting a little bit clustered. So I'm going to go ahead and and start right here. So we're again we got this is one meter. This is uh, this is 1.9, and so we we said that there was there was 1.45 times 204 plus 710. So 1.45 times 204 plus 710. This is going to be the torque about this axis right here. So this is going to equal 1,005.8. Uh, so this is, we'll call this T1. T1 equals 1,005.8. And so we've got to add T1 and T2 in order to get the sum of the torques. So T2, we would say 1.9. So, so 1.9 times 710, times 710, plus the, the uh, 204 times 1.45. 1.45 times 204, that doesn't change. That equals 1,715, and so this was T2 equals 1,715 uh, Newton meters. And so we can, we can set up our equation as uh, T1 over T1 plus T2, or we could say 1,005 1,005, and I'm going to round a lot here, uh, 1,715, so 1,715 plus 1,005, I'm going to simplify that, 
So I'm going to simplify that to 0 0.369, uh, 0 0.369, we'll go 485 just for fun, over 1 equals, this is going to equal the sum of the forces. So the sum of the forces, remember we had a 710 newtons, so 710 newtons plus a, a 204. And this is, we'll say this is the smaller force. So this actually simplifies to 914. And I, if I could write, 914. And so we're going to multiply 914 onto this side to find out what the smaller force is. And so the smaller force is 337.71 newtons. And so you can also find the larger force by taking the 9, so the, the 914 minus 337.71 will give you the, the larger force, the larger force. And so that actually equals uh, 576.30. And so actually I'm realizing that I have a rounding error somewhere. I'm not sure where it is because uh, I actually got, instead of uh, 337 on my actual answer, I got, three, uh, I got 340, um, and I don't have it in front of me right now, but I think it was like 343 or 345, something like that. So, um, and, uh, so there's a rounding error somewhere in this, but th that's the rough idea on how to solve that problem. And just so my rounding error doesn't confuse anybody, you're calculating the, the total torque. So you get, you get a torque on one side that's equal to the center mass uh, or the, the radius uh, of center mass times the mass. Uh, and you got to do that of the radius of center mass of 1 times the mass of 1 plus the radius time, uh, center mass of number 2 times the mass of number 2. You got to do that for every object. You have to take count for all the objects to get the, the torque on one side. Then you got to do, the, um, do all of that again, except you got to measure your radiuses from the other side. And so you get T1 and T2. And then you can do T1 over T1 plus T2 equals force 1 plus force 2. And usually this is going to be flipped, but it depends on how, you, how you're uh, describing, how you're labeling your forces. Uh, so the torque, the torque on this hinge right here is going to allow the lever bar to push down on this hinge over here. And so the, if we're calling this the torque on this one, T1, and the force on this one, F2, this equation is the one you want.